Dear friends, welcome back to Curious Vet. I am Dr. Mohsena. Today we will discuss about another important viral disease in canines. So let's begin today's topic, Infectious Canine Hepatitis or ICH. Infectious Canine Hepatitis is a worldwide contagious disease of dogs and the clinical signs vary from slight fever and congestion of mucous membranes to severe depression, marked leukopenia and coagulation disorders. This disease is also seen in other uh, canines like foxes, wolves, coyotes, etc. and other carnivores may become infected without developing clinical illness. Now let's see the etiology and pathogenesis of infectious canine hepatitis. Canine adenovirus 1 is the causative agent of ICH. And this canine adenovirus 1 is antigenetically related to CAV2, which is one of the cause of infectious canine tracheobronchitis. And CAV1 is resistant to lipid solvents such as ether as well as to acids and formalin. And it survives outside the host for weeks or months. 1 to 3 percentage solution of sodium hypochlorite or household bleach is an effective disinfectant for canine adenovirus 1. Ingestion of urine, feces or saliva of infected dogs is the main route of infection of infectious canine hepatitis and recovered dogs shed virus in their urine for more than 6 months. Initial infection occurs in the tonsillar crypts and payers patches, followed by viremia and disseminated infection, and the primary targets are the vascular endothelial cells, along with hepatic and renal parenchyma, spleen and lungs also become infected as well. There, there will be chronic kidney lesions and corneal clouding, also called blue eye, which is the result from immune complex reactions after recovery from acute or subclinical disease. Here you can see the picture of corneal clouding or blue eye caused by ICH. It is the result of immune complex reaction after recovery from acute or subclinical disease. Now let's see the clinical findings of ICH. As we told before, signs can vary from slight fever to death. And the mortality rate ranges from 10 to 30 percentage and it is typically highest in very young dogs. Incubation period is around 4 to 9 days. The first sign is a fever of more than 104 degree Fahrenheit which lasts uh, uh, almost 1 to 6 days and the fever is diaphasic. That is very important. Uh, the fever is biphasic and there can be apathy, anorexia, thirst, conjunctivitis, serous discharge from eyes and nose and abdominal pain and vomiting as well. These are all the clinical signs. Intense hyperemia or petechia of oral mucosa can be seen and there will be enlarged tonsils. Here you can see a picture of enlarged and hyperemic lymph nodes in a, uh, in a dog affected with canine adenovirus 1. Tachycardia out of proportion to the fever can occur and there may be subcutaneous edema of head, neck and trunk. Despite the hepatic involvement, there is a notable absence of icterus in most clinical cases. So that is very important. Despite hepatic involvement, there is an absence of icterus in most of the clinical cases. And clotting time is directly correlated with the severity of illness. is the result of DIC induced by vascular endothelial compromise coupled with failure of liver to rapidly replace consumed clotting factors.
there can be cns involvement but it is unusual and it's typically the result of vascular endothelial vascular injury because we told the primary targets are the vascular endothelial cells severely infected dogs may develop convulsions because of the forebrain damage Now let's see the clinical pathologic findings. Uh, the clinical pathologic findings reflect the coagulopathy, uh, which causes prolonged prothrombin time, thrombocytopenia, and increased fibrin de degradation products. Severely affected dogs show acute hepatocellular injury, and in such cases, there will be increased ALT and AST. Proteinuria is common. Leukopenia typically persists throughout the febrile period and the degree of leukopenia varies and seems to be correlated with the severity of illness. So, severe condition will have severe leukopenia and leukopenia persists throughout the febrile period. On recovery, dogs eat well but regain weight slowly. Hepatic transaminase activities peak around the day 14 of infection and then decline slowly. In almost 25% of recovered dogs, there is a bilateral corneal opacity that we told before and it develops 7 to 10 days after acute signs disappear and usually resolve spontaneously. In mild cases, transient corneal opacity may be the only sign of disease. Now let's see the lesions. Endothelial damage, well, that is the first primary target of the virus, result in pain brush hemorrhages. On the gastric cirrhosa, lymph nodes, uh, thymus, pancreas, and subcutaneous tissue. Hepatic cell necrosis produces a variegated color change in the liver, which may, may be normal in size or swollen. Histologically, there is centrilobular necrosis with neutrophilic and monocytic infiltration and hepatocellular intranuclear inclusions. So here you can see the picture of a liver from a dog infected with canine adenovirus 1. Here the liver is mottled yellow, tan and dark red, random coalescing co foci and in a reticular pattern with small number of pet decay. So there is a color change in the liver and size can be normal or swollen. Gallbladder is typically edematous and thickened. And edema of thymus can be found. Grayish white foci may be seen in the kidney cortex. In this picture you can see a thickened enlarged gallbladder. Now coming to the diagnosis, usually the abrupt onset of illness and bleeding suggest ICH. Although the clinical evidence is not always sufficient to differentiate ICH from distemper. So definitive antimortem diagnosis should be done with commercially available ELISA, serologic and PCR testing. PCR or restriction fragment length polymorphism is required to definitely distinguish CAV1 from CAV2. If clinically necessary and postmortem gross lesions in the liver and uh, gallbladder are more conclusive and diagnosis is confirmed by uh, virus isolation immunofluorescence characteristic intranuclear inclusion bodies in the liver or PCR fluorescence in situ hybridization studies of infected tissues as well so this is the histopathologic uh, specimen of liver infect, uh, of a canine infected with uh, ICH. Infection of hepatocytes and endothelial cells with CAV1 produces characteristic basophilic intranuclear inclusions surrounded by a clear zone that separate from the 
marginated chromatin so the, this arrow shows the intranuclear inclusion body now let's see the uh, treatment treatment is symptomatic and supportive broad spectrum antibiotics can be given and intravenously administered this broad spectrum antibiotic uh, intravenously administered balanced electrolyte solutions with 5 percentage dextrose supplementation are indicated plasma or whole blood transfusions can also be given in severely ill dogs although the transient corneal obesity usually requires no treatment uh, a drop in ophthalmic ointment may alleviate the painful ciliary spasm sometimes associated with it and dogs with corneal clouding should be protected from bright light systemic corticosteroids are contraindicated for treatment of corneal opacity associated with ICH so systemic corticosteroids are contraindicated uh, for the treatment of corneal opacity associated with ICH. So this is a picture of a young adult dog with corneal edema from an it uh, Italian shelter outbreak of CAB1 infection. The right eye shows the uh, typical blue eye or corneal edema and in these cases uh, the systemic corticosteroids are contraindicated. Now let's see the prevention of ICH. Modified live virus uh, injectable vaccines are available and are often combined with other vaccines. Vaccination against ICH is recommended at the time of canine distemper vaccination. Now, now there are multi-component vaccines with uh, PAVO, para-influenza, canine adenovirus and canine distemper. So, maternal antibody from the immune bitches interferes with active immunization in puppies until they are 9 to 12 weeks old. Attenuated CAV1 vaccines have produced transient unilateral or bilateral opacities of cornea and also the virus may be shed in urine. For these reasons, that it causes corneal opacity and the shed of virus in urine. CAV2 attenuated live virus strains which provide cross prote protection against CAV1 are preferentially used. Historically, annual revaccination against ICH was standard and the vaccines are labeled for annual use. So that's all about infectious skin and hepatitis. So the disease is caused by uh, can I add no virus 1 and the signs can uh, vary from mild fever and congestion of mucous membrane to severe depression marked leukopenia and uh, coagulation disorders like DIC and the uh, mortality rate in young dogs can be up to 10 to 30 percentage and the first sign is a fever of more than 1 or 4 degree Fahrenheit and the primary targets are the vascular endothelial cells and sometimes hepatic and renal parenchyma and lung become infected as well. Chronic kidney lesions and corneal clouding or blue eye can result from immune complex reactions after recovery from acute or subclinical disease. And treatment is usually symptomatic and supportive. Uh, and uh, prevention through modified live vaccines can be done. So that's all. Uh, if the video is informative, please like it and share it with your friends, comment your suggestions. If you are new to this channel and not subscribed yet, please subscribe and click the notification bell. Thank you.